All right, in this video, we're going to discuss proline and arginine biosynthesis. Now, arginine biosynthesis, we've actually already seen. It's the urea cycle. And I actually put that at the beginning of this playlist, and it was in another playlist um, in amino acid catabolism. And also, I have a separate playlist on the urea cycle, but that's actually how you synthesize arginine. We're going to look at it, though, here, and we're going to see that there's a way that we can get things into it, into the urea cycle, and that's ultimately starting with glutamate. So we looked at glutamate at the very beginning of amino acid biosynthesis, and we're actually going to see now that glutamate can be biotransformed into other amino acids, particularly proline and arginine. Glutamate is going to react with glutamate transacetylase right here. It gets an acetyl group from acetyl-CoA, and so what we're going to see is going down this column we have glutamate, and going down this column, N-acetylglutamate. So the only difference between these two columns is that we're going to have this nitrogen up here, this amine is going to have an acetyl group over on the right side. But essentially similar reactions are going to occur on both sides. Initially both glutamate and N-acetylglutamate are going to react with a kinase. Glutamate kinase and N-acetylglutamate kinase. It's going to phosphorylate the carboxyl over here on the left side. In other words, we're paralleling both sides. It's similar things are going to be happening. All right. Once we have that phosphate there, enzyme called a dehydrogenase, in this case glutamate dehydrogenase, and N-acetylglutamate dehydrogenase. These are going to use electrons from NADPH or NADH in order to reduce that uh, phosphocarboxyl group into an aldehyde. So now we have glutamate semialdehyde and N-acetylglutamate gamma semialdehyde. By the way, anytime you see the term semialdehyde, that's usually a term reserved for a molecule that has an aldehyde but also has a carboxylate. So you see an aldehyde over here, but it also has a carboxylate. A semialdehyde has both those groups in it. Um, if it didn't have the carboxyl group, you would just term it an aldehyde. But it's a semialdehyde because it has both. So on the next page, we're going to continue with glutamate gamma semialdehyde and N acetyl glutamate gamma semialdehyde. Okay? So here they are at the top. Let's now focus on the left side because we're going to see the synthesis of proline. Now glutamate gamma semialdehyde is an activated molecule, meaning an aldehyde is relatively reactive to a nucleophile. And we have a nucleophile over here, the alpha amine. The alpha amine is going to attack the aldehyde and undergo a non-enzymatic cyclization with the elimination of water. And that's going to produce something called delta-1 pyrroline 5-carboxylate. This molecule is then going to be reduced, this double bond right here will be reduced by pyrroline carboxylate reductase. It's going to use electrons from NADPH, and you're going to get proline. And that's your biosynthesis of proline, okay, from glutamate. Now in the other column where we have N-acetylglutamate gamma semialdehyde, we're going to now transaminate it. Meaning, remember we looked at transaminases a while ago, we're going to take this carbonyl right here and replace it with an amine. This molecule is now N-acetylornithine, okay? Now we're going to use an enzyme called N-acetylornithinase, which is going to hydrolyze off this acetyl group up here to give acetate, and that's going to take us from N-acetylornithine to just plain ornithine. Now hopefully you recognize ornithine, you recognize it as the, the initial substrate in the urea cycle. And so that's what you see here, urea cycle. We're not going to indicate the enzymes there, but suffice it to say, ornithine will be converted to arginine. And that is your biosynthesis of arginine. So both arginine and proline are initially going to come from glutamate. And remember also glutamate is synthesized from alpha ketoglutarate, which comes from the TCA cycle. So in some ways, you could actually consider alpha ketoglutarate being used to make glutamate, glutamine, and then also proline and arginine. All right. So hopefully that makes a little bit of sense. And we'll see in another video that arginine can actually be converted to nitric oxide, which is a very important signaling molecule. And we'll see that in the next video. All right, and after that, we're going to go into some more biosynthetic pathways. Make sure to like this video and subscribe for future videos and notifications.